Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech, and I thought we'd talk about the latest major app updates for early April, since it's been a few weeks since we talked about that. Now, Apple actually had a major outage this past week that affected the App Store, Apple Music, and many others. You can actually see the overall system status here on Apple's system status page. I'll link it in the description. But again, earlier this week, they had a ton of different outages affecting up to about 16 different things. Everything from the App Store, Mac App Store, Podcasts, Apple TV Plus, and much more. Also, Apple Podcasts will be unavailable on April 13th as Apple is going to be performing maintenance. They sent out different emails regarding this, and it says, Dear Podcast Creator, on April 13th, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Time, Apple Podcasts will be unavailable. Or op Apple Podcasts Connect, rather, will be unavailable for up to two hours. So it's not all day. It's just for scheduled maintenance, specifically when it could be six to eight. We don't really know, but it should take a couple hours. Now, Apple updated its iWork suite of apps this past week with Pages, Keynote, and Numbers, which adds a bunch of different features and even keyboard shortcuts. If we go to the App Store and we search for iWork, it's a quick way to see them all. You'll see it takes a second to load, and you can see Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. If we go into Pages, and yes, I actually use this. I don't pay for Microsoft Office since these are free, and... Excel is a little bit better than numbers, but if you need basic things, this is great. And you'll see here on iPad, press and hold the command key on, on a connected keyboard to select non-contiguous words, sentences, or paragraphs using a trackpad or mouse. It's got streamlined in-app notifications, which inform you of a person joining a collaborative document, and also it will preserve file formats in the full quality when adding HEIC photos taken on iPhone or iPad. And then they have some stability and performance improvements. Also, similarly on numbers, you'll see here there's streamlined in-app notifications, and then again, the same sort of updates. And then in Keynote, which is probably the best app here for creating presentations, it adds a new look to your slides with dynamic color, minimalist light, and minimalist dark themes. And then all of the other improvements we had before, as well as improved compatibility for slide transitions when importing and exporting Microsoft PowerPoint files. So again, all of those are updated. I think Keynote's probably the most used though. Apple Arcade actually added some new games that were mentioned last month. If we go into their press release, you can see them here where we have Poyo Poyo Puzzle Pop, Spatial Games, Crossy Road Castle, and Solitaire Stories coming a little bit later. If we scroll down, you can see some of those here, and some of them are available now. Some will be coming a little bit later, but if we go into the App Store, go into Arcade, you should see some of them available now. So there's some new ones here, and they're available now. Let me know if you've tried any of them out. I'll probably try some in the future here as well, and I'd look forward to some of those Spatial Games coming to Apple Vision Pro as it's been sort of slim there with some new releases. Apple created a new web page to actually help you develop apps using Swift. And while this is not a new game or app that's updated, they did update this website where you can develop in Swift and have all sorts of different tutorials learning how to do this. Explore Xcode, view structures and properties, layout and style, buttons and states, lists and text field, data modeling, and more. And they also updated YouTube with a new channel called Apple Developer, where it teaches you different things about Apple coding and much more. So it's great we have this, and we should have all of the sessions from WWDC 2024 here as well. Now the EU is at it again, and this time they may force Apple to allow users to delete the photo app. We could see this with more apps as well. And typically, if you want to select your own app, you can do that in the EU now along with side loading. But if you don't want Safari as your default browser, it will fully operate with other browsers as well. And they no longer have to use the Safari underlying code of WebKit. They can use their own code in the EU. But the EU wants to make it so the Photos app can be interchanged with others and people can delete it. However, that poses a problem if you want to take a photo. Different platforms such as Android just allow you to download photos into their app and then add additional apps. You have to have a main storage place so they could use files for that. But at this point, I don't think that one makes very much sense at all. And having you delete main system files, especially photos, would just mean it would go into the camera. So they may have to change that. Hopefully they don't with that specific thing.
Google's Chrome browser recently had a class action lawsuit that was finally settled after starting in 2020. It claimed that Google was actually collecting information when you were even in incognito mode. This was found to be true, and Google has now said that they'll actually delete that information that they had stored. So if you're in the Chrome browser and you go to incognito, you would expect that they wouldn't have any of that information, but apparently they were collecting that. According to the Wall Street Journal, they'll soon delete all of that data that was previously stored and hopefully no longer store any of that information. Now, many people have asked for years for Apple to add the option to lock every single app within iOS. Now, we can currently lock different photos and notes, but not a whole lot else. However, there's an app that can help you out with that. So you'll see there's a new app called App Lock, and it requires a subscription to use it regularly, but you can lock all of your apps, and it actually uses screen time to do this. So you'll see we go here, we can use an app widget, or just lock all of your apps using screen time access. So it uses a workaround, but just makes it a little bit easier to do that with a shortcut. So you have to allow access to screen time, and you can allow it with Face ID, and then it can approve it. So you can lock any specific app, but it does cost a yearly fee or a lifetime fee, but you can try it for free and then it's $30 a year if you really wanna lock everything, but you can use it to do that if you'd like to, so I wanted to make you aware of it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, how Apple services went down earlier in the day, meta services were down as well, which affected WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook threads, and more. So that's something that also went down this past week, strangely around the same time as Apple's apps went down later on in the day. So they had outage after outage across different services. Now, there was an update recently to WhatsApp. A WhatsApp, of course, is used widely around the world, and you can now record and send video messages within chats. You can actually jump forward and back by double tapping, and the attachment tray actually has a new design. So if we go into it, and you'll see here, we can record different photos and videos. You can record a video here as well, spin it around, switch it to video, and record directly into it if you want to do that. Also, the attachment tray, like I said, has been updated. So it's great to have these updates, and they're available now. Also, if you're using the Signal app, that was updated to fix a bug where if you missed a call and you open a chat, the missed call indicator will now be cleared from the calls tab. So if you use that regularly, that fix has been implemented. Now, Spotify is actually set to have a price increase with the subscription fee by about $1 to $2, depending on your current plan. The UK, Australia, and Pakistan will be first with the USA and others coming a little bit later in the year or possibly next year. So it looks like those prices are going up. So you may want to consider Apple Music or maybe another service. Let me know which service you use in the comments below. Now, something else that's been updated is one of my favorite browsers called Arc Search. I've shown this in previous videos, and if we go into this, and maybe you want to use apple.com, you can use it as a regular browser, or you can have it browse for me and give me information about that. They've recently updated it to now allow it to work better with Apple Wallet Passes, so it can add a pass directly from the browser, and this is a great sort of AI-based browser. You don't have to use it all the time, but you can set it as default, and it's one of those browsers that's just different enough that many people are seemingly switching to it. If you use your phone as a key for your vehicle, whether that's a Tesla or something else, and you're using a Rivian, Rivian currently has a new update that allows you to use the lock screen widget to see your range that's left. They also updated the app here where it says they've made it easier for service requests, sharing and pairing of keys is simpler, and again, check your range at a glance with the new lock screen widget. So it's really nice that they've updated this. I don't have a Rivian anymore, but if you have one, they keep updating the app. Now, Craft Documents is something I use all the time for all of my notes for my videos. I used to use the Notes app from Apple, and I've been using Craft lately, and it's been really great. They update it regularly, and it had a major update this past Easter. If we go to the Notes, you'll see here with version 2.7.8 that was released a day ago or so, it's the Easter Craft update with lots of different things such as folder tree view, a table of contents on the go, removed document sidebars that were a little bit annoying that they'd changed. They've made enhancements with PDF export enhancements, task indicators, and much more. This is actually a really great app because they're very focused on making notes. So I actually pay for this myself and I find it to be a little bit better than the notes app and it just looks better overall. In fact, let's take a look at today's notes. 
So you can see them here for early April, all the different notes that I've made. And as we scroll down, you can see the final one for 1Password, where it was updated with some new visual improvements when setting it up. They've actually fixed issues with passkey support and more. I use 1Password all the time, and I highly recommend it as a password manager, maybe along with what Apple has to offer with Keychain. So I'll link it in the description where you can try it out and get a discount as well. It's not sponsored, but again, I've used it for years and I really like it. So those are all the major app updates this week. Hopefully there's more with Apple's different apps with Final Cut, maybe some iOS apps and much more. I think all of those major updates will be with iOS 18 for all of the major apps here, but I'm looking forward to see what they have to offer there. Let me know if there's any other apps you've seen recently updated with major updates. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.